We're back with the League of the Genuine Conversations. Uh, we continue our series of discussions on the big subject of counterfeits and fakes, which affect every sector uh, of the country. Uh, this week, last week, we celebrated the International Education Day. We happen to have participated in that event uh, with UNESCO and UNICEF. And the theme uh, for the celebrations for this year for International Education Day was changing course and transforming education. It is befitting that we are here in Taiba International School, secondary school. This is the secondary section. Yes. Uh, Taiba International School, secondary section. We are here with the head teacher. She doesn't like to call herself the headmistress. She's the head teacher, Annette Nanyonga, the head teacher of Taiba International School. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Annette, I saw um, out there, you, you have either it's a logo or, or a slogan. Mm. You say education with a difference. <clears throat> but Annette, we know that uh, so many schools mm. say one thing on the, on the logo and deliver something different. Mm. Is Taiba actually giving education with a difference? Oh, thank you very much. I am happy you observed that, that we are education with a difference. And uh, I think I'm the best person to defend that, having worked with Taiba for over 20 years and having studied in Uganda to see what happened in school and what we are doing in Taiba that qualify us to say <coughs> we are giving education with a difference. Mm. The difference is vast and I may not have enough time to explore it in this short interview. But a fast forward, our difference is in the way we look at children. Back in the days, even today, there are some good schools, and I say good in quotes, which are by design to take only the fours at P7 to 5 or 8 to 12 in senior 4. In Taiba we say everyone deserves a right to learn. Everyone has a right to access a good education. So ours is an open school. It is on a first come, first serve basis. That is different. And when you come to Taiba, we'll take you the way you come. We do not have streams based <coughs> on ability. We say, in society, God created us with our differences. And he did not create one area for the weak and another area for the strong. So we sit all our children in the same class. As we get down to teach, we teach using learner-centered methods. We don't talk about Learner-centered, not teacher-centered. Not learner-centered. A teacher is a facilitator. We also mind the numbers in class. That also makes us different. Then as other schools fight to achieve top grades only, in Taiba we are looking at holistic education. So if you walked around school asking them about, for example, the five C's, everyone will tell you what the five C's are. So we are a school What that are the five C's? I am about <coughs> to tell you that. Mm. We are a school that says, yes, you need a good academic grade, but you need confidence because the world will only... That's the first C. The first C. Confidence. Confidence. Mm. We need all our learners to be confident because... Even with a good grade, if you don't have the confidence, you may not pass an interview. We are living in a world where we have challenges, but we complain much about them instead of fixing them. So we say we want learners that are creative. And we discourage our students from complaining about things without giving <coughs> solutions. So our second C is creativity. You must be creative in everything you do, even in the way you present your work. Then we talk about critical thinking. 
Uh, I don't know if you also saw it, yeah. but we emphasize to the learners that the work of a true education is not to train learners to be reflectors of other people's thoughts, but to have their own thoughts. So we encourage critical thinking. thinking. That is, Annette, <clears throat> right now in the education sector, mm. we have challenges of the quality of education, the quality of products. Mm. The education system seems to be pushing for grades, seems to be pushing for academic excellence. Mm. And as a result of that, we are having students leaving your institutions mm. but who are not useful to society they do not have problem solving skills they do not have perseverance they do not have uh, you, you know all that that is you meet in the real life mm. to what extent do you think the way the curriculum has been or is is affecting the quality of education and mm. giving us facts if you like uh, before looking at the system itself, mm. I want to look at the issue of counterfeits in education, starting with the quality of teachers. It is very unfortunate that uh, in our country here, teaching used to be for the failures. If a child failed P7, they would dump them in a TTC, PTC, a TTC, Teacher Training College. When you failed senior four, they would say... Go to teaching. Go to teaching. <clears throat> so we failed to see that teaching is a noble profession. That it is the backbone of the community or society. And if you attract <clears throat> quacks into education, then the input determines the output. If you have bad teachers, you cannot expect to have good learners. You can't give what you don't have. So we need to copy from countries like Singapore, countries like Finland, where teachers are people of high academic excellence. Where to be a teacher, one has to go through serious screening. Because once you, have, you put right the teachers, then you will have good products. Then society has also contributed to maybe the value of education. When it comes to remuneration, teachers are seen as people that can go home with whatever little they have. So the respect you give to a teacher, the way you facilitate the teacher, translates in what they are going to be. Are you saying that child. if you put more money for the teachers, then you'll have more ethics, you'll have good products when the teachers are paid more? Is money um, a big factor, really? Yeah, at, uh, when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, at the bottom of it, we have the physiological needs. If I slept hungry, mm. you don't expect me to come to class with the energy. If my landlord is knocking every morning, you don't expect me to, to give your child a smile. If I'm not sure of the next day, uh, you cannot expect me to train a child that will have vision. I will have a limit. So what I'm saying is, teachers need to be respected to start with. By the pay? No, 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 not mm. just pay, but start with pay. Make them have some self-esteem. Let a teacher have something in the pocket. Then how do you look at them in society? Recently, I was chatting with a friend who told me uh, once one of the big people in the country said it is difficult to deal with the uh, doctors, but easy to deal with the teachers. Because whatever you say, they are quick to say yes. And what forces them to say yes is because they are not economically empowered. Yeah. When you have economic independence, you will have all the independence you need. When you are economically dependent and malnourished, then even when you speak, people may not take it very seriously. So let us try, first of all, to raise the status of teachers. Let us try to attract <coughs> clever children into education. Let us try to show to everyone in the country that the future of all sectors lies Depends on the, teaching the human profession. resource. 
and the nature of the human resource depends on the quality of teachers. But don't you think some schools are trying to increase the pass for the teachers by engaging in some practices which probably are affecting the quality of the education. For example, some teachers are engaged in coaching, mm. um, some schools will advertise and put the, the teachers' faces in the newspaper, this is the best math teacher, this is to, to try and do advertising for the teacher. Some schools will uh, advertise their results mm. uh, to say this is the best school, we get 98% first grade and so on. Don't you think that because of these demands by the teachers who want more money, you're pushing the schools to engage in counterfeit behavior? Uh, true, that is happening and much more than you have mentioned. Recently when schools opened, I saw schools had put photo booths for pictures, uh, others were creating scenarios that are very attractive to the learners and yet at the back of the school what is happening is different. So schools need to come out and tell what they are doing the way it is done. Uh, when children are born, I will start from there. They, they are born in families, and uh, the family is the first school. So before we look at the school, the formal school, and the teacher and what they do, I think counterfeiting in education starts at home. How? You have a child finishing kindergarten, going to P1, and you think, you throw school. a party. You throw and a party. Put graduating a, at nursery. Graduating school. from nursery exactly. to P1. And uh -huh. you call people, you slaughter gods. Then they uh -huh. go to do an interview, which they fail. But through backdoor, you find your way into that school. That is already starting the, the first. The faking. Exactly. Someone does not meet the standard of that school, but you're forcing them to fit in. So every term or every weekend, you're sending handouts to the teacher so that this child who's who, who is sending, the parent or the teacher is demanding? The parent. Because the some parent. parents will say the teacher is demanding but for, I for think the handout. As so. a teacher, when I demand from you, you have a right to question why I am demanding. First of all, you pay fees and you must get value for your money. And if I ask something extra, it means I am counterfeiting in education. I am not giving what I should give in class when it should be given, but are reserving it to demand for something from the parent. So parents are also facilitating this. Uh, something you may not know, in Taiba we have never published our results, never. But Is we, it because they don't pass well? No. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at some of, course of our I know, recent results. But I'm asking results. for the viewers, tell us, why don't our you publish? Our children are excelling. Why should we publish? At the moment, we are full and we have not advertised. My thinking and our view of education is give a good service. Let people appreciate what you're doing and then they'll come to you. So you're saying those schools that advertise that we got only A's bring your child, you're saying that's unethical? To me it is. People should not advertise grades. First of all, I don't know what the law says about it. If I bring my child to your school, it is my private engagement with you. Why should you publish what they got for everyone to know? I don't know whether parents ever give consent to that. No, they don't. And our view here on the League of the Genuine is that education is a public good. Mm -hmm. It is not a commercial product that you sell and give a discount and all those kind of things. Mm. So, so therefore, if you commercialize education, mm. then the very things you're complaining about are going to creep in where now success is defined necessarily by the grade. As before we take the break, what is success in education? Is success in education something more than the certificate and the grade that you get? It is much more than the certificate. Uh, we have seen people that come to us looking for jobs with very good grades, put them in class, 
they can't defend the grades. I believe someone should receive holistic education. As I started, the five C's. Have someone with good papers, because good papers can get you to the job. But then give them all the other skills. Give them the confidence, the creativity, critical thinking, communication, care for the community, so that when they get on the job, they can defend the result. When they relate, they are not minding themselves, but minding about the community. Because why we are having some of these challenges, it is because of the self-centered nature of most of our people. If I can get uh, one million dollars out of something, I will not care who is going to be affected. So education should also focus on the human aspect. It is unethical. The humanities. Exactly. <coughs> uh, it is called Ubuntu. Ubuntu, yes. Exactly. We need to take a break. We are having an interview here in Taiba International School, the secondary uh, section. We are with Annette Nanyonjo, the head teacher of Taiba International School, secondary division. When we return, we shall be discussing with Annette more about the new curriculum, mm. uh, the lower secondary uh, school curriculum, and then we shall also be discussing matters to do with COVID uh, and education. We need to take a break. We're back with the second segment of the League of the Genuine Conversations. With me, Fred Mwema. I am hosting Annette Nanyonjo, head teacher at Taiba International School. Annette, before we go into the new curriculum, we've had a lockdown for two years mm. and kids were not studying. Many kids were not studying. Was that a right move? And we're going to have a crisis after two years with some half baked products and so on, and we were sending the counterfeit situation in education. What's your comment on that? Uh, to begin with, you can't achieve anything if you're dead. So the lockdown at the time it started was necessary because uh, unfortunately we lost one of our own when schools closed. And I know other schools lost children so it was good that schools were closed. For but two years? Two years. Was it was necessary for two years? Much. Countries like Sweden didn't close at all. And some of the pediatricians were saying that uh, because the incidence of COVID among small children and so on was less. So they kept them open. The EU, um, even during COVID, France and these countries, here, Tanzania, Kenya, schools were open. I don't know how safe, uh, safe I am to say what I'm about to say. But uh, the closure should have come to make preparations for handling patients and making ourselves more equipped. And unfortunately, we closed schools and nothing of the sort was done. It was like keep children away from school, uh, make many big budgets, send out money, and nothing was done. So for that one, I think it So do you, as an educationist, move. do you think that the products, the education products mm. in Uganda was affected? We are going to affect By them. far, by far. First of all, ask what were children doing during the two years? Recently, I was listening to Dr. Dr. Nakabugo of Uwezo, mm. and she said 25% of girls had conceived the age 14 to 19. And it has affected mostly the children of uh, four to six who were meant to start school and who could hardly use technology to learn. Well, I am speaking on this in a general perspective, but I must also tell you that at Taiba we were not affected that much. So are you open during the we lockdown? We were not physically open but our students continued learning online. And those on the international curriculum were able to do all their exams and have progressed to university. The ones on the local the curriculum local, yes. were taught. And we kept hoping that maybe when schools reopen, there is going to be an arrangement for people that continued learning online 
to do exams as others. They were told, so who examined them? Your neighbor was closed. This is what I'm saying. We yeah. taught them in preparation for the national exam, anticipating that when they open, then your neighbor would give us exams for them to sit. So what happened? Well, our system is a one size fits all. If the nation was not ready for it, they cannot cater for people that who are diverse, people that are, are creative, creative and, mm. and taught children. So consequently, we have, uh, for example, senior six students who have completed the syllabus and are just waiting to sit ex ex uh, the, the exams. The same is happening in so senior So somebody four. was in senior six for two years. They are He's repeating. now in senior seven or what? What class they is that? They are in senior six waiting to do exams. Maybe this is something that we need to, to, to learn from. We should not say exams are given by UNEB alone and they can only come in November. I find that a little backward. So there's a crisis we are just sitting on. Yes. Which will explode at some point. It will. But, but uh, yesterday I received a message. I am yet to try and verify the source showing that children who feel they are ready to sit, for example, senior four, and they did uh, P7 in 2018, will be given an opportunity to sit. So there is some rigidity. Then I've heard some, some kids will be automatically promoted. On what basis will those be promoted? Now that, is, and those the that explains the counterfeits. People joined senior one for two weeks and schools closed. They reopened, they came back for one week, schools closed again. Now they have progressed to senior two. Many of our people are saying this knowledge can be condensed into one class and then they progress. But they are the same people who say people who studied online are not ready to sit senior four when their schools say they are. So maybe we need to be more flexible, we need to be more creative, and we need to adapt. Times have changed and we cannot insist on one size fits all. But those who are attacking online, is it because they, they think the digital literacy is not the same as, uh, you know, when you have this physical engagement with the kid and they are studying? Is there something that is missing and maybe the product is not fine-tuned? I think we are missing out on the aspects of what school gives. For now, everyone should understand that with a computer and internet, a lot can be learned. And where need be, you can invite a tutor to facilitate. And a child can sit exams and pass them. When they you, don't have to be physically in a class. They don't have to. <clears throat> because we have tested it, we produced excellent results in the international exams. And some of these children were in class for, I think, one month. They studied online throughout. They did online, came and did year 12 exams, passed them, went back online, came and sat year 13, passed. Some people stopped physical school in year 9, came back to do year 11. And one of our boys, Christopher Luemba, produced nine A stars and one A. And another Rahim Taha had seven A stars and two A's. But their physical interaction stopped in year nine. So we need to be adaptive. And they can still have academic excellence. They okay. are excellent. We need to move a bit to COVID. It mm -hmm. has really devastated the education sector. Already you are saying that uh, we have issues on the two years missed out and so on. But <clears throat> during COVID, as kids were staying out of school, you've mm. mentioned that, uh, actually I read a report from the United Nations Population Fund. Yes. In Uganda, since COVID opened, we had about 600,000 uh, pregnancies for, for kids who are going to school, girls. Where is the problem? Mm. Is the problem, are these pregnancies caused by the education that the schools are giving? Is it a problem of parenting? Is it a problem of moral decadence? Why these high numbers? And many of them are not going to go back to school. Mm -hmm. These teenage pregnancies are blamed on who? Uh, fast forward, let us give credit to education because if many have conceived and they were not conceiving in school, it means You're education doing your work. plays mm. a big role. 
you know, fighting against such habits. But it is also very revealing of the breakdown in parenting. I have children in my house. I have girls, I have boys. None of them has taken drugs because of lockdown. None of them is pregnant. Maybe because you're a teacher, you're very strict. Uh, before I'm a teacher, I am a Ugandan. I am a mother. And I know it is my responsibility to protect my children. It's my responsibility to instill in them the values that I want and the morals. So my first question will be, where were the parents when their children were conceiving? Or doing drugs or whatever it is. Because I drugs don't want is also a big issue. School. Mm. Schools are not responsible for the many pregnancies that are reported. It is telling parents to get back to their basics. We take children to school to learn chemistry, to learn physics, not to learn how to protect yourself from getting pregnant. These are things parents must do. I think there is something that parents need to learn from this. There are so many things I criticize as a teacher. Fashion, how do your teenagers dress? I have this thing called sleepovers. Someone says, my children are not home, they went for a sleepover at a friend's place. Who is protecting your child in another They person's? say sleepovers are helping to build social capital and uh, helping the, 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 the skills of interaction for the child. You, you are against that? Oh, uh, I don't if think it's you had a sleepover as a child, did no, you? No, our times, of course, we, we never Let had. Let me tell you, some things can change, but there are things that must remain as they were. We copy much from the Western world. But when you look at them and how they protect their children, you will be surprised. So pregnancies came, it was very unfortunate, and it is sad these children may never go back to school. But I invite parents to play their part. Closure of schools has revealed to parents that there is something they are missing. We are having families where children are ruling over the parents. I have seen this happen in school. Children ruling over the parents yes. is a product of uh, the rights. Children have their rights. Their rights are unknown and their rights must be observed. Not like our times where you do something and you're punished. This, Some women these days in this engagement. school, we don't beat. We don't beat because that is one of the most abused thing when it comes to children. But we talk to them and they understand. And we don't have mad children in Taiba. I tell them what I think is right. But we have parents who cannot tell children what is right. They fear talking to their children. A child refuses to eat and sends home for pocket money. They pump them with money. One of the most valuable assets a parent can give to a child is time, not money. Take time to talk to your teenager. Talk to your child. As you talk and interact, you will get to know who their friends are, what risks are likely to face them, and then you find solutions. But every time you think money will do your part, it won't. The money you're giving them is helping them to engage with another child, it is helping them to go to places you don't want them to go, it is helping them to buy things you don't want them to buy. Then we have loved them so much that we give them the latest iPhones, but do we try to monitor what they are doing with that phone? Who are they communicating with? Children are not creative, and I'm afraid as we progress, we are going to have a lot of physical challenges, because all the time this child is on their mobile phone, the backbone is affected. The brain is not given time to think. They are not creative. I see how they write. Uh, very difficult to construct a sentence in I correct can't. English. Everything they must do a spell check. Exactly. Computer. No, get, get to mathematics. You tell someone, have this 10,000, go buy this. They need a calculator to do simple arithmetic. So there are so many things that we need to put right at the family level and in school. In school. So how has the new curriculum, mm. how has it come in to address these challenges you're talking about? How is the new curriculum stopping the counterfeiting in education? Uh, can or you is it? Uh, allow me first to celebrate Taiba? 
because at the moment I think we are leading and the country is following us. This new curriculum is what Taiba has been doing for all the years. Uh, it is child I'm going to, If you allow me, I will read for you some of the things in the new curriculum that I found uh, interesting. Yes. Um, in the old curriculum, education was for knowing. Hmm. In the new curriculum, education is for understanding. That is what we do here. What does that mean? Okay, knowing, for example, you know the law of demand. What does the law of demand the state? The higher the price, the lower the demand. But ask someone to bring that to reality. They cannot apply the so knowledge. So they don't have understanding. They didn't understand it. Someone crams that law and after finishing senior six, it is irrelevant Cannot to apply. Them. In the old, the teacher was the only decision maker. Mm. In the new one, the teacher and the students make decisions. And yet you are complaining that the, 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 the students rule over their parents. So the new curriculum is allowing students to rule over their parents. You're when saying, you, teacher? you read the details of the new curriculum, mm. it allows or it invites teachers to create scenarios where children are going to navigate and find solutions and explain concepts as opposed to telling them that this is this and it is that. So it allows for questioning. It allows them to get outside the class. The critical thinking you're talking about. And look at things mm. exactly. So you feel the new curriculum will help us weed out the, the fakes? We if shall have better not, products. If it is not counterfeited, it will. What am I talking about here? You know, it has come in. First of all, I think the preparation was not enough. Because the new curriculum requires that you have small numbers in class that you can put into small groups and they work together. But in Uganda, we have schools where in one class you have 200 students. So if, and when, they, when you look at the manpower, the, have teacher, the teachers been retooled? The teachers have been to, trained, mm. but in my, in my thinking, it was not sufficient. Because you cannot say, today we are training teachers in Wachiso. You bring about f uh, 300 teachers and one or uh, two facilitators who talk to them about something new. They are not giving them hands-on training and then you roll out, now go and teach. Have they grasped, have they installed that new thing in their system? The teachers to be able would, to teach. but mm. I think there is much to be done to help them, first of all, appreciate it. Because most of our teachers, not here but in Uganda, are so used to dictating notes and then giving exams and mark. Even the way this new curriculum has to be assessed needs to be understood because it has an aspect of cumulative assessment mm. as opposed to the terminal assessment. So one has to show how children have progressed over the years. It is not a one-end assessment that you it's use one exam to determine it's, that this person has achieved nothing. Annette, we need to take a break. We're going for our last uh, part of the discussion. Mm. And uh, when we return, uh, we should be continuing our conversation okay. on how is Taiba stopping counterfeits coming onto the school premises. Uh, let's take a break. Welcome back to the last segment of our League of the Genuine Conversations. We are here in Taiba International School, the secondary division. We are with the head teacher, Annette. Let me stop there. Uh, we talking about counterfeits in education. Uh, Annette, you've just reopened, okay, physically, you've been doing it online. We have a lot of counterfeits in education. Now that you have students here, I'll tell you that uh, a lot of the food on the market is fake. Many of the products coming from maize um, have aflatoxins, they are contaminated. Uh, these are things which cause cancer. Um, a lot of the food poisoning that you see, even the vegetables that you're buying, 
Some of them have pesticides, which are used as preservatives, and then you come and you're cooking. We have issues with the cooking oil, we have issues with the detergents. How is Taiba ensuring that you don't have counterfeits on these premises? How, what measures are you taking? It's very unfortunate what you're saying and very disheartening because when you hear such things and you're keeping around you over 1,000 children, that one mistake can cause death to many. But uh, as a school, we try to promote ethical behavior. When we are doing our procurements, for example, we don't look for the cheapest source. We don't. You don't want to save money? We want to save, but we value what we buy. We want to get value for our money. So when it comes to buying, for example, food, we try to go to companies that are certified by UNBS so that whether the stamp is fake, but at least we are cautious that it must be authentic by the national standards. And uh, when uh, we come to buying, for example, scholastics, we try to look at where does it come from. I think one of the reasons a lot of counterfeits penetrate schools is as you try to make a profit, as you try to minimize cost, you look for cheaper options. We are not in that league. Not to say we are wasting money looking for expensive items, no. But we try to buy from the producers. For example, uh, rice we buy from the direct importers, people that have been certified. So if the certificates are fake, that one we can't be held responsible. But we shall not buy from anyone. Annette, uh, one of the most faked foods mm. on the market is wheat. I'll tell you, um, without fear of contradiction, that a lot of the wheat that is imported in this country is expired. So there are brokers out there mm. who will go and... Uh, go to these uh, auctions and they bid uh, for large quantities of wheat and then they repackage them and bring them here. So many, many bakeries here, a lot of the bread here is produced out of wheat which is either expired or wheat ha which has banned substances. Okay. Mm. So how easy is it for you to differentiate as a school with a thousand children? How is it easy for you to differentiate between the genuine and the fake, do you conduct some independent tests or you just rely on the UNBS tests and so on? Now, unfortunately, we have been relying on the certification of UNBS mm. because we don't have a lab for that. So we thought, and I still think, everyone needs to play their part. If you're put in charge of certifying items coming to the country, and you take whatever small benefit it may be at the expense of the majority, then it becomes a big, big challenge. But uh, one of the things, for example, we tried to, to do to make sure we give genuine things, we, give, we serve juice in this school. And previously we used to serve processed juice. Until one time, I think about 10 years ago, we bought some juice and uh, the date seemed changed. From then on, we started making our own juice. We boil our water, we buy fruits. Of course, even some fruits on the market are fed on pesticides, but at least we are sure this is a fresh You're fruit. You're taking some measures. We are trying But then to. now, there are certain things, especially since you have young people here. Mm. We have a crisis, a health crisis among the youth they are suffering from obesity, they are getting diseases which were for mature people, largely because of junk food. Mm. What is Taiba doing to help your students get off junk food while at school and away from school? Because that's a major issue. Uh, in Taiba, food is a social activity and mm -hmm. food is compulsory. So much that if the bell for food goes, Teachers will walk around school to make sure everyone is eating. Unfortunately, unfortunately for us, you know, charity begins at home. 
we receive students sometimes who have been trained not to eat food. So one comes to the dining. They're trying to do a figure. Not a figure. You know size also. They are waiting to get out of there and then look for their junk. We speak so much against, for example, fizzy drinks. But that's what the, the parents keep bringing in. It's what they are used to so taking. So do you control what the parents bring for the children? What Apparently, they pack. we don't allow in, for example, cooked food. The grub, the, the processed stuff, the uh, but, tinned uh, stuff. But we don't allow in things like noodles because we say people must eat fresh food, which we provide. But you will find there are things like biscuits, so there are things like cornflakes, uh, packed milk that parents bring in. So I think this thing of fighting counterfeits and bad feeding needs to go back to the family. My conviction is the family is the basic unit of the society. Starting point. The starting point. If we are to make anything happen, it should start at family level. I am surprised corruption has gone down to even little children of four years. A four-year-old will tell you, do for me this and I will give you this. That is nurturing corruption. So counterfeits should also be fought starting at the family level. Then you progress into schools. Sometimes parents challenge us. Why are you expensive when there is a cheaper option? You could use this and reduce fees. That is in a way promoting counterfeits. But as a school, we try to deal with authentic suppliers. For example, as you drive on Entebbe Road, there are so many petrol stations which sell petroleum products. The at, single pump. Uh, yes, at very low prices. But we have persisted with Total for the last 20 years. Even if Total is expensive, we continue with it for our generator, for our water pump, for our vehicles. So that is the level we are at. It is not about price. We look at quality. It's quality. Exactly. Okay. Uh, actually, I may also mention this. Mm. Uh, last time, there is a time we didn't have beds. And uh, one of my sisters, the head teacher, went to buy beds from Katwe. And she found beds. They looked nice, well painted. And before the term could end, the beds were broken. In Taiba, we said we shall not buy Katwe beds. We fabricate our own beds. So counterfeits are all over. And we are trying to buy, to fabricate where we can. For the furniture, we have someone who does it for us. And even chairs, we don't look for where it is cheap. We go to the manufacturers and say, this is the quality that we want. So we are making an effort. But to to it fight is... it. One of the biggest, because we have a culture, mm. a subculture of counterfeiting. Everything is faked. If we had to talk about women's products from the hair up to the, I don't know, these days you have uh, artificial nails. What are those things called? Somebody will have the put a nail. nails, yes. What are those called? They are artificial nails, acrylic, some are powder, some are plastic. Uh -huh. So we, we can have, everything can be duplicated. True. But so, so we now have a culture of counterfeiting, which is seated well in society. Don't you think that as an education institution, you need maybe to put the subject of counterfeiting on the curriculum so that you teach these young people about how to avoid counterfeits, mm. how to be more ethical in the marketplace? First of all, I want to thank you that you have taken this on and are sensitizing people to look out for these people that are making counterfeits. Mm. And uh, the way we have clubs in schools, I think we should also start counterfeit or clubs that fight counterfeits. Because you may find that children don't even understand some of these things. But if there is a deliberate effort to have a club, that should be well received and much appreciated in every An school. An anti-counterfeit club. Exactly. Is Taiba open for that? It is. Why not? In Taiba, by the way, we have a subject under the Cambridge curriculum. We call it Piché. It's personal social health education. But it also has an aspect of economics where we talk about all these things. And I keep telling students, even if you don't get a D1 in physics, but get a D1 in Piché in terms of what you're doing, 
you're going to be successful in life. And some of the things we discuss are counterfeits. Even counterfeit people, plastic, what you see is not what the are person you against is. artificial intelligence? These days you can see robots which can talk and uh, do everything. Not to it's say I'm against artificial intelligence mm. because we are progressing. But I want people that are natural. I want people that love and believe what they are and who they are and people that care about the community. That is why one of our C's is care for the community. We reach out to do projects in the community. We plant trees. We care about the environment. And one of the pillars of our school is a clean, safe, and secure environment. And when you try to break that down, it means a lot. It means a lot, including free from counterfeits. Because you can't say you're clean, you can't say you're safe when you're surrounded. When the environment is contaminated. Exactly. Uh, Annette, we're going to close this, but there is something that I, I heard the other day, back to the curriculum. Mm. And the, the proposal was to eliminate PLE exams. And they were thinking that it's not serving its purpose. Mm. And yet exams might be the tool that we use to weed out the counterfeits, the fakes. I know we have problems of malpractice. Is it right to remove the PLE exams? Uh, I can say yes and no. My yes because this PLE exam is very traumatizing. I don't like the trauma it puts on the child. Then two, PLE is examining children for what they have studied from P3 to P7. I would rather have someone produce a summary report of what they have done over the years. For the so, seven years. So you have a report years. for P1, exactly. for P2. Exactly. And then you average it and say, Annette is maybe an A child. Derek is a B child like that. But to some, someone's seven years in about eight hours of exam is not a fair thing. Then two, teachers have stopped teaching children to understand, but drilled them to pass PLE. After that exam, try to ask that child what they know. You will find that a big percentage of them cannot translate that knowledge into anything. They crammed, they passed, and that's it. So I don't like PLE for that. So you would support that we don't have it? I would support that we don't have PLE. The only challenge I'm looking at, PLE has been used to decide who will go to which school. So my question is, how are they going to decide that Chisubi is going to take this person, Namagunga will take this, mm. and this school will take this. Because if all schools accept to be the way we work, and say first come, first serve, there is no school that is for weak children by design. God provided us the same environment. We should also nurture equality and then people sprout depending on their own abilities. That is the only role I see that PLE plays. So we should just find a solution mm. of how are we going to ration the schools where everyone wants to go without the PLE grade. And then train <coughs> children. Education is for enjoyment. PLE takes away the enjoyment. So the tension should go away. There is no need for tension. Why do we teach children? We are teaching them to adapt to the environment, not to be to tormented by an exam. And it, Recently, I don't know mm. if you heard of a child who committed suicide. Yes, because, because she, they she failed. Did pass I think it was in Hoima. Exactly. But why should one die? Mm. Annette, this school is in a very strategic place. You Taiba. are 14, I think 14 or 16, 16 kilometers, kilometers from the international airport. Yes. The international airport is reputed for brain drain. Mm. Even today, if I go with you to the airport, you'll see a lot of young people going out mm. looking for jobs. How is Taiba helping to reduce this? Are you 
helping to do job creation, job creators, or you are training people so that they go to the airport uh, by design, for jobs? Our philosophy is nurturing people that are going to be job makers and not job seekers. In uh, Olivo, we have uh, ch children, child on duty or student on duty to show to them what happens in the world of work. As children grow to A level, where we see possibilities of going away, we have an entrepreneurship project for all. And everyone in A level has to think out of a project, of a project that can help them earn money. Legal money. You do internships for them as well? We do internships within school. Mm. Then we also have the leadership course. So that children are not looking at how do I run away? But we are telling them, be creative. Identify a problem within your environment. As you offer a solution, you're not only creating unemployment for yourself, but you're creating employment for others. For others. And basically creating development for your exactly. country. And yet I'm told we have to stop. Um, but we need to have your last word uh, to those who are listening, to those who are viewing you. Mm. What is your New Year message on counterfeits, this menace which is everywhere? What is your message to those listening? Uh, thank you very much. It is very unfortunate that we have counterfeits, but I know it is everyone's responsibility to fight this. My plea to everyone watching, do your part. If you've been producing counterfeits, say no to this. Let us nurture values and morals that will guard against this vice. If we fight counterfeits, we are promoting good health. If we fight counterfeits, we are nurturing good development. And once we have sustainable development without counterfeits, even the world as it is today, the global village, will receive our products and uh, our standard of living will improve. And I thank you. That is a very good message. That was Annette Nanyonjo, the head teacher. I don't know why you're Taiba. finding my name hard. I, because I, I know somebody called Nanyonga, so I, na, I'm mixing it up. But uh, Annette Nanyo, Nanyonga is Nanyonjo. the same, same clan. You have the same clan. Not a big offense. It's not a big offense. Okay. She's the head teacher uh, of Taiba International School, the secondary division. We've been having a conversation here on the subject of counterface in the education sector. would like to thank the audience behind us. Uh, those are students of Taiba International School. They have sat here for the most part of one hour listening in. And we have been invited as the League of the Genuine to uh, open a club or have an interaction uh, with the school here so that we can create more awareness. I think we shall be taking up that challenge, that opportunity. Uh, so as usual, we'd like to thank again our online community, those who make a date with us every Friday uh, to tune in, to watch, to share, to like. This is a responsibility, like you've said, for everyone. It's mm -hmm. the responsibility of you and me to ensure that we are safe uh, from the effects of counterfeit. So until the next episode, we'd like to sign off by saying don't be fake, buy and sell genuine always.